Hey Mary, what you working on today? I'm going to make a version of this tool. Cool. And it's a steel that I twisted. It was a triangular piece of stock. And I twisted it to get this, just, it's a decorative pattern. And then I actually turned the handle on a watchmaker's lathe and made it a little bronze ferrule. It's a piece of walnut. I've used it over the years. It's been a nice little scribe. So I'm going to try to do this technique with this piece of square stock. Um, it works completely different than non-ferrous metal. This is steel, so it's a ferrous metal, and it hopefully is tool steel. We'll find out. What you can do with steel that you can't do with gold or silver in the same way is it becomes plastic when it's hot. When gold is red hot, it becomes brittle. You can't move it. Mm -hmm. It'll break. But iron and steel becomes elastic when it's hot. So I'm going to heat up to red hot a little spot here and see if we can twist it. So I'm only going to heat up, I got it in a, one end in a vise, and I'm going to heat one spot. I've got the other end in a vise grip. Let's see, oh yeah, we're going to get red hot real soon here. Okay, good. Gonna get it red hot. Test it for movement. Oh wow, look at that, okay. Now while it's red hot, I'm going to twist it, okay? And I can control my heat. I'm going to take, take my torch off. I don't want to break it or anything. But see how elastic? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Now watch my fingers. Turn, point the torch a little bit away from your fingers. Might be a good idea. So, so that's <laughs> very easy to turn. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just doing it with my left hand, and I am not a left-handed person. But I've become far more left-handed in recent this year. But anyway. The goal would be to keep it straight. Now you can straighten up the whole thing and it's cool. Okay, so I've got a decorative twist right there. Now, I'm going to let that cool for a minute and then I'm going to heat up a little closer to uh, the vice grips and go the opposite direction just for decoration. Okay. So now let's let that get that cool. And I'll heat up here. Oh, wow. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Yeah, so it used to, I pointed away from my fingers now, of course. I used to make tools like this. Just for fun. I mean, like when you're forging or doing blacksmithing, this is a real common technique for getting those decorative, twisted um, details on like fireplace tools. And right. So you might have seen those. Yes. So if this wasn't steel, this would just break? You, yeah, you. it wouldn't work this way on uh, silver or gold. Okay, I think I've got, wait a minute, I want to go a little more twist here. Make sure I've got my flat planes kind of lined up. I think that looks pretty good. Should we go for one more? Sure, yeah, it's okay. looking real good. <laughs> okay, and then after I do this, um, I'll grind the shape at the point and bring it to a nice taper because right now it's too fat. I uh, have to do a bunch of grinding on a grinding wheel, and then I can shape it. And then I can harden it and then draw a temper. So that all comes after. It also anneals completely differently than... i away from my fingers now. Um, than silver or gold, which you would want to um, get red hot and then quench steel you get red hot and then you put it in sand, mm. quench it in sand so that it cools very slowly instead of very quickly. It's an it's a, it's a opposite. So then if you want to harden it, you heat it up to cherry red and then you um, quench it and say use crankcase oil or something and that actually hardens it. So it's an opposite reaction. Now do I have my plane straight? I think we're good, and I think that looks great. Yeah, that design looks awesome. There Very we go. Good. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Cool. Okay, it's cooling down, so that's good. It's still pretty warm. Uh, I can see a little bit of a... It's not perfectly straight. There's a little bit of a wow, a little wave in it. So I'm going to take it over to the um, vise where there's a nice surface. I'm going to give it a tap or two with my hammer and see okay. if I can... Okay, it's that way. Let's see this way. Take it 
put on my vice grip and turn it a little bit. And I think I've got one more spot right there. That's pretty good. Oh yeah. I can tell this is tool steel. And the way I can tell this is tool steel is because of the kind of spark that is coming off of this steel. If it was mild steel, the spark would be long and simple. This is a short, complex, bursty spark, and I'll show you without the shop back on. This is something I learned a long time ago, and this is a pretty reliable test if it's tool steel. So look at this spark here. See how uh, complex that spark is? That makes me believe that this is tool steel. So, so I'm going to you know, shape this. shaping up. Um, I might put a thinner a thinner taper there, maybe. Um, then on the back side, you need to have the part that goes into the handle. That's called the tang. So at some point I'll decide where I'm going to grind in, shorten this, and then grind it to a much smaller um, point that'll then get pounded in and epoxied into the handle. So I've got the preliminary grinding on the tang done. I have to shorten it and, and grind it some more, but I'm going to shorten it first. It's, it would be functional without it, but it's going to look better. It's a little more pretty. And I think that's looking pretty good there. I'll leave a few tool marks on it. This isn't fine jewelry after all. <laughs> this is the triple E or the bobbing compound. Coming in about two-thirds of the way down the wheel. You can push against it to keep your control. I think the sandpaper here on the high parts of the patterned area are going to make the pattern pop out a little more. I think we could kind of leave it up to a dark area. Yeah. That would be kind of a nice contrast. I'll, I'll try it. I can always change it later if I don't like how it looks. True. But I love the handle. It's rosewood. I turned it on that lathe all those years ago, and it has a nice, um, it must be a bronze or a brass, so it'll go like that. And this has a nice flat spot so it can't roll off your bench. Uh -huh. I always thought that this one should have had it. I like the shape of this handle, but it likes to roll off yeah. of things. So this one will have the benefit of not rolling. So that's where it's going to go. But I think it'll be beautiful. There won't be sharp edges. This little texture will make it easy to hold. Um, so it can be held on the shaft or it can be held by the handle. Or This is a nice tool that can be used as like even a center punch. You can, you can bear down on the center, you know, to make a a starting hole in a piece of metal, make your mark, mm -hmm. put it there, and then... For drilling. For drilling, mm -hmm. you can use this as a center marker. It's very useful to have this nice round handle. Now I need to harden it. That, that allowed me to do the grinding and filing. Now I need to harden it, which means I have to cool it quickly, which means I can plunge it into water or use crankcase oil. I don't have used crankcase oil today, so we'll plunge it into water and that will harden it and make it into a, a, something that will hold an edge. You don't need a particularly hot flame, uh, just a, a big kind of neutral flame is probably good. Oh, I better move these little gold bezels of Debbie's. So she'll get mad if I melt them. Picky, picky. So oh, yes. So, we're just going to get this to a nice red hot. Take a few minutes. 
If you did this to gold or silver, you would soften it. You do it to steel or iron and you harden it. Hmm. You can see the color coming on the you see the color coming yes. onto the steel. We just need to get it hotter. So I am gonna kick up the flame a little a little more air. It's getting that cherry red at the tip. Yeah. And the tip is where we are most concerned about getting it hard, because that's what needs to hold the edge. Now my, my scripts are staying cool. You know, making tools, I, I think when I took this class, um, I just had such a sense of satisfaction making a tool, something that I could actually use. It was like this self-sufficiency thing. I, I think that's a piece of jewelry making that I've always loved, is, is the skills could translate into, you know, come the revolution, I'll make you some forks and knives and pots and pans and yes. you know, fix your trailer hinges and... Okay, I think we've got it. That tip is really nice and hot. And here we go. Here we go. Uh-huh. Looks perfect. This is now hot, very hard, but it's also brittle. It's just like a knife blade. You have to draw a temper on it and um, bring it to a low temperature, somewhere between four and 500 degrees and um, it will soften the metal a little bit so that it mm -hmm. will still stay sharp but will be tougher and it will lose some of its brittleness. So I've got this set up so I can watch the color spread up the, the length of the tool. When I cleaned off the oxides with my sanding stick, I could feel that it was harder. It wasn't sanding as easily, so I think we've achieved our hardness. That's great. I'm just going to take a gentle flame and heat this lower on the tool and watch the color travel up the tip, because tip is thin. It would heat too quickly, and we should see the color start to, to appear. Oh yeah, okay, I see some coming in and oh, okay, look mm -hmm. at that. Now, we've got a blue, we've got it going to a, a purple, that's hotter, blue is hotter, purple is cooler, I've got the pale straw yellow just coming into the tip, mm -hmm. and I think we'll quench it now. And there you go. A temper has now been drawn on this tool. Very primitive methods of determining temperatures. No, um, no thermometer needed. <laughs> These are the old school ways that you know, blacksmiths have done this forever, so I'm very excited. Okay. I'm going to do a little two-part epoxy, and it's five-minute epoxy, and then I'm going to um, mix it and then cement this handle on. I've taken a little bit of the, I re-drilled this handle a little bit and I'd kept the little sawdust out of it and I'm going to stick it in the epoxy just to color it up a little. Sort of hide the hole because it's not the perfect fit on the hole because it had a different tool in it. So I'll mix up your epoxy and you can color epoxy with <clears throat> things like charcoal dust or whatever you need. The epoxy isn't really the main holder, it should be friction and tight fit, but just it's a good security blanket. Put a little on, stick it in my hole. Okay, that's probably good. Cut for a minute. Now we have five minute epoxy here, and I want to wipe off the excess. There, a little bit. I've got this in the vise with leather on it <clears throat> to protect it, although it's pretty hard stuff. And then I want to jam this on there and try to keep it centered, which is maybe harder than it seems. Let's see. 
I'm going to make line up <clears throat> the flat spot on my handle with the flat plane of the stock. And I'm using a rub. Uh, this is not rubber. This is a nylon mallet. Hope the handle doesn't split. But that's why you put the ferro on it. Hmm. And that is part of why the wood doesn't split. to be a professional tool maker. But it might be okay. Okay. Let's see. Wipe off some of that epoxy that's dripping out. <clears throat> so you can see it's a really tight fit. The epoxy is just a little bit of insurance and a little bit of a seal. So since it's already jammed in there, we don't even have to wait for it to dry because I don't think well, it looks pretty good. I don't think you could make that come out now if you wanted to. Mm. Look at that. Ooh. Beautiful. I like it. So here it is, finished. It's a one-of-a-kind handmade scribe of tool steel with a copper ferrule. Uh -huh and a rosewood hand-turned handle. And it's just kind of fun and beautiful and maybe it'll even get used someday. <laughs>